Exactly one week ago, 50,000 Catholics from throughout this country gathered at the Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis to celebrate the first National Eucharistic Revival since 1941. I was one year old at that time. 200 bishops, 2,000 priests, deacons, and seminarians, 700 nuns, and thousands of energized, happy Catholics of all ages and backgrounds came to demonstrate and deepen their love for the Eucharist. They were asked to become disciples on mission, to be the body of Christ that goes forth to feed others. And Bishop Robert Barron of Word on Fire Catholic Ministries was one of the keynoters. And he challenged his live audience and the rest of us, 70 million Catholics in the United States, to live our faith more radically, to become what we eat in the Eucharist, the body of Christ given for others, the blood of Christ poured out on their behalf, and to become the people we were meant to be. This weekend, about 600 Catholics from the Lake Country area of our diocese will gather at St. Teresa of Calcutta churches in North Lake and Manches to celebrate the Eucharist as we do every weekend. We come with various degrees of faith and a variety of hungers for spiritual strength, support, and hope. Our keynoter is Jesus of Nazareth. His words and actions have been recorded by spirit-filled evangelists whose faith communities had similar hungers to our own. Today's gospel story of the most famous picnic in religious history is the only miracle recorded by all four evangelists. And Matthew and Mark tell it twice. We've called it the multiplication of loaves and fish, though the term multiplication never occurs in the Gospels. So how did this happen? Did five loaves suddenly become 500? Did Jesus' example motivate others to share what they had already brought? Did people become more aware of one another and so took only what they needed so that others could share and none would go hungry? But such questions miss the point of John's gospel story. This was a preview of the Last Supper event when Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body. Take and drink, this is my blood of the new covenant which will be shed for many. But the Gospels were not written simply to give us a glimpse of Eucharistic history. They were written to urge us also to become disciples on mission, who imitate the Lord's compassion to others. And that's why huge crowds followed him, because they found in Jesus what they did not find in their own synagogue or temple. And today, the corporal works of mercy remind us that Christ is still 
hungry, thirsty, homeless, naked, ill, and imprisoned, and asks us to see him in his beloved poor. For some of us, the enormity of that need can be frightening or discouraging. We might even feel like Elisha's servant in our first reading, objecting to what only 20 barley loaves could do for 100 people. Or like Andrew in today's gospel, dismissive of the kid who had only five loaves and a couple fish for thousands. Do we ever wonder whether the food items we bring to the food pantry or the school supplies we contribute for needy children or the yellow envelope collection of this month which provides meals at the cathedral's open door cafe or the support that sent our work campers to Mexico, Missouri, not Missouri, Mexico, Missouri. And they came back safely last evening during our mass. It was wonderful. Or the couple hours that we volunteer each week. Do we ever wonder whether that makes any difference? Today's gospel urges us to trust that when we offer whatever we have, whoever we are, and place ourselves in God's hands, it is enough. It makes a difference. St. Paul, in today's Ephesians reading, reminds us to live in a manner worthy of the call we have received with all humility, gentleness, and patience, caring for one another through love. Today, the Lord again accepts what little we think we have to share and blesses us and sends us forth to be the Eucharist, the body of Christ that we receive, to be shared with a hungry world. And as a result of our efforts to be the people we were meant to be, as Bishop Barron put it, there will be an abundance of leftovers, including the promise of eternal life. God bless you.